Hi guys, Sujadu Sen again with a new video. In this video, I'm going to discuss design of a small steel structure. This steel structure, as you can see, is a very small. I can show you the dimensions. Its height is around 3.85 and its width is only 2.5 meter and its span is 5 meters. If you see its rendered view, here is a rendered view. This is a very small structure with few elements only. Actually, this type of a structure is called a pipe bridge. The function of a pipe bridge I can show you in this I just give a small search in Google and I show I can show you that this is the structure which is called a pipe bridge. This is a very long span pipe bridge of course that's why it's very heavy as compared to the model which I am showing. My model is a very small one and uh, that's why you can see there are two levels of uh, deck and uh, its width is fairly high. But basically the concept of pipe bridge is to, to put a cross over or for the pipes whenever they, they want to cross some obstruction. So coming back to our problem, this pipe bridge is designed now. To design a pipe bridge, I have a very good reference. This is uh, AISC, sorry, ASC manual and this is the wind load for petrochemical and other industrial facilities. As per this standard, what we have to do, we define various type of loads. For example, the dead load, DS, which is the dead load due to self weight. Then we define DE, which is the dead load of empty pipe or electrical tray or any equipment, so many things. DF is the dead load of the fabricated weight of equipment like platforms, ladders, etc. D0 is the dead load, of, uh, dead load due to operating weight of piping, electrical tray and equipment. DT is the dead load due to test weight. And these are some details. Live load is there, thermal load is there, and of course the wind load. In our case, we have considered all these loads along with the earthquake load also. So here the first load is an earthquake load. Of course, I have used the earthquake load generator of uh, STAT. I'm not going to discuss in detail the parameters needed to define the earthquake load generator of a start but later on maybe in some video I will discuss the earthquake load generator and wind load generator of a start. For the time being I am using this earthquake load generator in x direction I am using the earthquake load generator in z direction. Then dead load which is the dead load of the structure, that is the self load. I am using a factor of 1.05. This 5 is for, uh, only 5% increment is for the gusset plates, nuts, bolts, etc. Operating dead load, these are the pipes, various pipes. Basically, there were three pipes on this structure. And these are the loads coming from the pipes. So these are the loads from the pipes. Empty load, these are the empty loads. For the sake of simplicity, I am using the same load over here. Test load, again the same load. Because, you know, the petrochemical has a relative density of 0.8. But whenever it is tested initially, it is tested with water. 
So the water has the relative density of 1. So it is always better to use the relative density, uh, sorry, the, the, the water, assume that water is filled and take that load as an operating load. So here the test load is the same as uh, operating load. Since all the live loads are covered, so I just put some fictitious load over here. This is very small, only 0 0.01 kilo newton. Then these are the anchor loads which are coming from the Caesar analysis or the pipe stress analysis. Normally these loads are always coming from the pipe stress analysis or Caesar. This is TL thermal load. This thermal load basically is the load coming from the friction of the pipe. Again this is coming from the pipe stress analysis. Then I have defined the wind load using the generator. Let me increase the factor so you can see it clearly. So this is the wind load generated in X, this is the wind load generator in, generated in Y and of course the temperature load plus 20 degree and minus 20 degree. This is used to define the variation in temperature because at the time of erection we never know what will be the temperature and in summer the temperature goes up and in winter it drops. So basically these are the loads defined for pipe supporting structure like a pipe bridge or a pipe rack. Maybe in some future video I will go into much more detail for the design of pipe racks. Then what I have done here from load case number 101 to load case number 158. These are all ultimate load combinations. These are as per AISC, AISC 7, 705. And of course, when the, 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 the seismic load is considered, then I have used the load combinations prescribed in chapter 12 of AISC. That is the seismic load combination. This is governed by paragraph 12.4.2.3. This is ASC 705. As per this, I have to consider these load combinations. So when all these load combinations are considered, so it ended in a, in a lot of load combinations. So all these combinations are there. After that, from 201 and onward, I use this for linear load combination. That means for allowable stress design. It is starts from 201 and then it goes to something around 269. and all these are ultimate. So all the loads which are defined in 100 series, these are ultimate loads and 200 series, these are in uh, allowable stress method. Why both the load conditions are defined? Because to design the foundation, to size the foundation, I need the allowable load combination to get the area of the foundation. And I'm using LF, LRFT method to design the steel, so that's why I need the ultimate loads. So that's why you can see that many load combinations over here. When I go to design steel, these are the parameters defined. I'm using AIS Unified 2010 code. The method is LRFD as I mentioned, FY is of course 50 KSI and all these parameters are defined over here. 
and then I have to define the check code. So let us run. When I run this software, maybe it will take little time because of that many load combinations. So there is no error, only one warning, no notes. Let's see what is in the output file. So this is, this says one or more lines are too long. This is the uh, seismic load generator. So I have nothing to do, no problem. And then I can go and see the design result. So instead of going into much detail, let us see whether is there any failed member. So, so we should select by specification all failed. Thanks God, no beam fails. So whatever our members were selected, they are all qualifying. So the columns are 12 W1245. These beams are W10 by 30. These beams are W12 by 45. And these bracings are W6 by 25. Now, this is not the end of the story. We have to design the connections also. So I can go to RAM connection. Okay. I have already designed the base plate, the end plate. These are moment connection. This is also a moment connection. Let us see what is the base plate design coming over here. So, let me change a little bit. The support is a is on a pedestal. Let us click pedestal and the size of the pedestal is not 50 inch, maybe maximum, maximum will be 30 inch and width should be also 30 inch, fine. And then I can see that this pedestal is a small one. The size of the base plate comes out to be 16 inch by 17 inch. And these are four anchor bolts. The whole base plate is designed. You can see the result over here. So the base plate is designed. All the calculations are given. Fine. And then I want to check this connection. Of course, this is a moment connection. This moment connection is the beam connected on the flange. It is with the end plate, as you can see. And whole calculation is given over here. Similarly, this one, the beam is connected to the web. Let us see. So here is the moment connection when the beam is connected to the web. Of course, if needed, we can fine tune this, but just as a demo, no need to do anything. That means we can find, we can take these values as our moment connection. This is just a typical connection we can use everywhere. Base plate, there are four base plates, so we can take the same base plate for all four locations. So this is very handy over here and we can design this base plate easily and the connections easily.
Now, what about the foundations? Let's come out of this stat. Let us close. Okay. Sorry. I wanted to open the STAD foundation. My mistake, I opened the STAD. I have already designed this. these foundations so these were the four foundations These are all our load cases. Of course, here we have to define one thing. All the primary loads should be defined as primary. Then ultimate load should be defined as ultimate. It's a little bit tedious. That's why I have done it before. And all the loads which are service should be defined as service loads. So that it will size the foundations based on the service loads and it will design the concrete based on the ultimate load combinations. All these parameters are there so we can see the calculation sheet. So here is the calculation sheet. Let's see a little bit wider. So the foundation comes out to be 3.67 feet by 3.67 feet and its thickness is 1 feet. We can change the parameters and we can define whatever result suits us. But this shows that how an isolated footing can be designed very easily in a stat foundation. All these calculation, calculations are there. The load combinations are there. So every detail is there. Hopefully you will like this idea. This was a brief introduction of um, designing process uh, of, a, of a steel structure. I took a very simple steel structure, very few elements and only four foundations. Maybe in our, uh, in my future um, e video, I will take some detailed example of a pipe rack design where I will define the, the, the wind load, generation of the wind load, generation of the seismic load and application of all the, the, the dead and live loads as per the ASC standard. Thank you very much. Hopefully you will like this uh, video. Don't forget to, to give me a like and subscribe my channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.